Hey, haven't made a video in a while. This video um, is about the splenic flexure syndrome, so you might want to stay tuned about, I would say, four or five minutes into this. I got, I'm making an update on my life. Um, yeah, I thought I'd give an update on my life. Things are, things are going good, but they're also going really bad. Um, I can't make my videos the same as I used to, as you can tell with all these like swallowing difficulties, difficulty speaking. And if you look through my videos, if you look, something happened to me last year. Uh, it was right around when I got the coronavirus shot. And actually, I don't think it was. A, um, I, although I had an allergic reaction, that's not what happened. Something else happened at that time. But I got really sick last summer. If you look through my videos, you'll see, uh, look, one and a half years ago or two years ago, three and four years ago, this isn't the way I was. I had difficulty with speaking, but not to this degree. And the thing is, and I hope to God I finally have my answer. And I go to the hospital uh, sometime this week. Uh, I have to prepare myself to go to the hospital. Um, I hate going there. But uh, but I knew with my abdominal, before I ever started going for any of my diagnosis, I remember I'm like, I remember I said to my dad, I'm like, you know, there's like four or five things happening in, in an area like, you know, like this big. And it's kind of scary trying to get into them. So last year, um, I did I did get my um, diagnosis of gallbladder dyskinesia. So I got that diagnosis. And so I get attacks of, you know, shoulder pain goes up my right. <sighs> things like bowel habit changes, like just literally overnight. I didn't know what happened to me. And I believe this is an old problem that's really evolved. And I've been extremely uncomfortable since last year. Um, I got diagnosed with um, muscle tension dysphonia. So uh, it's not a psychological thing. I asked him, I'm like, is this psychological? It certainly doesn't feel like it. And you can see the difficulty I have. And I believe this difficulty can be remedied because of the problem that I know is happening. Um, something's got my throat. Uh, pills are hard to swallow, like just suddenly, like I'm getting caught in my throat. Metal tastes in my mouth and all that type of stuff. Anyways, um, so the muscle tension dysphonia, it's like, it's like, it's like dystonia. They're both dysphonias. And it affected my life, and it really, it really affected my social life a lot. And in the last year, like, like I don't want to talk to, I don't want to talk on the phone I, unless I'm in person with someone. It's very tough to talk. It just, so I got that diagnosis. So a dysphonia is, is a dysphonia, and so I got that. Um, what else was I gonna say? Just on a side note, I know um, I know I have Christian followers who watch some of my videos. Pay attention at the very end, or sorry, in the description. I'm going to leave a Billy Graham sermon, his best ever sermon. I want you to watch it. And I dare you to watch, I dare every one of my viewers to watch three minutes of it, and I bet you won't turn it away. Um... So how did I catch on to, to this? So so this shit like this doesn't just happen overnight. And, and uh, you know, I don't like speaking ahead of time. And I'll tell you, I think it's a hernia because I already have a diagnosis of a hiatal hernia. Uh, but I'm going to gonna get it checked this week. So I was, I do crunches, I do push-ups. And I noticed when I would turn certain ways, like my diaphragm is, is spasming, like bad. Um, and there's like a burning in where the stomach junction is, and that's where I'm getting tested for achalasia, but I don't think it's achalasia. The main thing is there's just been burning in an area, you know, like the size of my ring, like that, and it's at my stomach junction and my esophagus. And so I do have this diagnosis, but that was a long time ago. I have my abdominal scarring too. 
So I'm going to go in and uh, and all the symptoms, all the gallbladder symptoms, everything I've experienced since last year, my breathing, everything could be that, and that's what I'm hoping for. So that's my update. Um, I only just found out the other day it can be uh, what they call a, the great imitator of other diseases, gallbladder, uh, all sorts of things, man. But like uh, part of my exercise regimen is getting, I uh, sit on my countertop, this is at nighttime. I do this very carefully now. I just do leg lifts. I don't want to sit on my spine and do a crunch. So I do, you know, like I sit there. I just sit there and I do leg lifts. When I do that, it starts, I can feel it go out of place. So if that is the case, then I have my, I finally have my answer to like, well, like my, feels like my throat is just being crushed. Really did a, a job on me. But otherwise, Besides that, my life, otherwise, my walking from adhesive arachnoiditis now, I walk pretty much, like if you saw me on the street, you wouldn't know anymore. Look on my cane, I can walk, you'd think I walk relatively normally, you would pass me on the street, but, but, uh, so I'm going to get into the splenic flexor syndrome, and that's the reason I make this, this video today. Give me a second, I just got to take a breath. It really is that bad, man. I think my stomach, so the ability of it's a hernia in my stomach causing all this difficulty in my video. So this happened, I had a wicked attack just of the splenic flexor syndrome um, one hour ago, an hour and a half ago. And I also had one, um, so that'd be four days ago and they were almost, the one four days ago almost brought me to the hospital and I thought it was this this hernia thing but it just, they were just happening together and this is what I started to notice this, so the the title of this video is Splenic Flexor Syndrome Worst Triggers and I'll tell you I hate traveling in cars so this is what happens to me with the Splenic Flexor Syndrome I also changed um, to egg whites. I don't eat eggs anymore and I got more healthy. Um, so if I have to go to an appointment, let's say that I go to an appointment um, and it's different for me than with other different uh, people who have splenic flexor syndrome because I have other difficulties, abdominal difficulties. I'll go to an appointment and I'll notice if like the car ride the other day was both ways an hour and a half so I had to go to a hospital at the other end of the city and back and I know like it really by sitting in a car just sitting in a car it's just just your your the splenic flexure your transverse colon is going up into your splenic flexure so it's going up into it and when you're in a car, it's just riding against it, riding against it, riding against it. People don't talk about this on, on videos about this. That's very painful and it's very nagging. Um, and the longer you sit in a car, the longer you do that, the, longer, the worse this gets. And what happens is, after some time, you start to build a lazy colon. And it starts to go like this. It's just lazy. And how is it going to turn that flexure? I hate appointments so much because I know that by not going to an appointment, I miss my walk. And so I take a walk twice a day for health and for the splenic flexure syndrome. Because if I eat, I go for a walk right away. And by walking, it helps that transverse colon instead of going up like that. It helps it go up and make it turn because you got to push it. You by by walking, you keep your colon moving. So, so after an appointment, the next day I may have my first meal of the day. I may feel fine, but then I get to my second one, and I, you know, like I'm I'm like feel like I'm gonna pass out. 
Um, like I'm getting real cold sweats and stuff. This happened like four days ago and it just happened an hour and a half ago. And I knew to expect that, that's almost to be expected when you go like far appointments, sitting in a car for long periods of time, those types of things. So what is it, what happens? What happens is so much distension builds up behind a lazy colon. And when you go to, so for me, when I go to eat that second meal, so the next morning, the first meal may be okay, but the second one after I've done activity, it's like everything behind that flexure, uh, stool, gas, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, these are abdominal syndromes. It gets trapped there and all of a sudden you get sweaty, you get hot, your heart starts to pound, you start getting cold. Man, that's pretty bad. Uh, I think doctors, physicians, and hospitals underestimate what the splenic flexor syndrome really can do to a person, but um, in my belief it actually turned my, turn, uh, changed my personality. Um, I don't mean it gave me a personality disorder, I mean it, it, um, it made me irritable and seem intense to people when it really it's just, um, it's just the colic riding up into my splenic flexor. So, that's why when I'm with like when I'm with people, I'm like you know I got to keep moving, I got to keep moving. Um, what else was I gonna say about it? Um, it's no different. The other part I noticed about this, and I may have said it in another splenic flexor syndrome, and I make this because I saw like a whole bunch of people watch this. There's probably a lot of people don't have the diagnosis, but um, say when you wake up, you you eat your first meal, you're fine. You go do a whole bunch of activity, and you do it for a number of hours. And in that time, you might whatever food you eat, you might eat a few candies, you might eat a muffin, whatever you have in your stomach, whatever you have. Uh, if it's a little amount, it may not matter. But if you start building up a whole bunch of stuff, and for me, it's I have to take my pain meds and then eat another meal. I take my pain meds and I swallow it with water and I start to eat. And when I put that first piece of food in my stomach, everything behind the splenic flexure comes back to bite you. Everything that's in your stomach and you feel like you're gonna you're gonna puke or whatever, but um yeah, that's that's about it with that. So we'll see you later. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, in the description, I'm gonna leave that video for for Billy Graham. I've been watching his videos, man. That guy's a fire, I tell you. I knew I knew his name all my life. I just I just never watched his his videos. This one is called "Who Is Jesus?" and listen to what he has to say. Um, so, anyways, thanks for watching my video. Um, hope everyone's doing well.